So moving on to day two, um, we're taking things up a notch. So we're still focused on changing the parent functions of sine and cosine um, by changing the amplitude and period, but we're also gonna be shifting things. So that means I can shift things to the left or the right, and I can th shift things up and down. Um, so big thing here, amplitude is always the number that's being multiplied out in front of sine or cosine. So if I multiply something out in front, it's going to be a vertical stretch or a shrink. That's affecting the, what we call the amplitude. Notice I throw some absolute value bars there because if that A is negative, that's still affecting the amplitude, but the negative is going to reflect it. It's not going to affect how far up or down I go. So I just care about the positive value of whatever A is. Um, period is still whatever B is. So when I have a B, a number being multiplied inside sine or cosine to find the period, you take two pi and divide it by B. Or as frequency is just the reciprocal of that. You have two pi over B. The difference between the two, period just means the time it takes to complete a full wave, whereas frequency is how many waves I complete in two pi. So if I'm adjusting the period, for example, if I'm shrinking it, it only takes me pi over two to get to a full wave. That means the frequency is just flip-flopped. I'm reaching four separate waves in a matter of two pi. So I've just shrunk it. Shifts, um, if I have something happening inside, so for example, if I add or subtract inside, inside stuff, so inside things happening inside the functions are always going the opposite. So if I subtract an H, that means I'm going to the right, the opposite of what you'd expect. If I have a plus H inside, that means I'm going to the left. Whereas outside stuff, so these plus Ks, Outside's exactly what you expect. So if I take, for example, y equals x squared, and I add four to it, I'm going up four. So a positive k, meaning a number on the outside, shifts this graph up, so that'll affect the midline. If I subtract a k, I'm going down. So here's a quick practice. I'll do one, and then I'll start another video for a few more examples. In this first one, you have a cosine function with a plus four. All that plus four means is the parent function is being shifted up four. So when I graph this, my midline is no longer going to be at zero, zero. So I just wanna leave some room for that. Here's my midline at four. Now I always draw a dotted line in there so that you know exactly what you're gonna keep coming back to once you start graphing. Now there's nothing being added, or I'm sorry, multiplied out in front, so my amplitude is just one. What that means is now I'm going up one and down one from the midline. So my high point will be at five, my low point will be at three. The period wasn't affected because I have nothing being multiplied inside, nothing being multiplied to that x, so my period is two pi. So my fourth tick mark should be two pi, I'm gonna have four tick marks, half of two pi is pi, half of that is pi over two. So every tick mark's going up by pi over two. One pi over two, two pi over two, three pi over two, and four pi over two. Same in the other direction. So here's negative two pi. Make sure you're labeling every single tick mark. So here we go. This is a cosine graph. So cosine starts high. So the high point of my graph here is five. Then I'm going middle, then low, then middle, then high. So notice I didn't touch the x-axis at all. It shifted the parent function up four. So now my midline's at four, my low point, and my high point have been adjusted as well. Connect your points is a nice smooth wave. And because you use the four tick mark rule, meaning four tick marks to the left and the right of the y-axis, you've graphed two full periods. Here, one period, high point to high point. Here's another period, high point to high point.